Hello and welcome to Shopping for the Real You. I'm Andrea Flommer, the author of the Amazon bestseller, Shopping for the Real You. And today my guest is Marcella Gift. And what a gift she is, and especially to her mom. And so you'll learn about that in just a moment. <laughs> Marcella is the designer and founder of Emmy Cadeau. Did I pronounce that right? Close. It's M. Cadeau. M. Cadeau. Yes. Shoes. Uh, and she, it's a, a New York-based company. Mm -hmm. And she started this company uh, in honor, I suppose you would say, of her mom. So I'm going to let her explain it all. Welcome, Marcella. It's a, it's a delight to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I've been looking forward to speaking with you for a, for a long time. Great. Um, it's a little bit about how this whole project started. I have a bunch of questions for you, but tell us how it started. Sure. Um, um, it, was a, it was driven by a mix of things. Um, one, my mother and I have always shared a, a passion for anything that was, you know, creative and just, you know, um, that something that we can do with our, you know, do with your hands and stuff. And, you know, where shoes came about is because my, uh, when I was younger, my mother and I would, you know, we'd go shopping. She's a teacher. She's on her feet all the time. She's a retired teacher now. But one of the things that was always important to her was finding shoes that were really comfortable. Um, but she would never buy something just for the sake of, oh, I need these for now and I'll take whatever. They had to be good quality. They had to look right. Um, and, you know, it was never a matter of buying something that you would throw away a month later. So that, I think that was always dormant in the back of my mind. Um, and then as I, as I grew up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, having, you know, being a working woman myself now, um, there are a few things I know when I went to shopping, there are a few things that I went looking for that, you know, I, I found that I couldn't find. You know, I, I like, you know, good quality things. I like things that are different. Um, but sometimes it's hard to find those in a way that's, that's still comfortable. You know, I always joke that we found a way to send a man to the moon, but we can't find, we can't make comfortable heels yet for women. So I don't know what the holdup is. Um, <laughs> So I, so I decided, you know what, I'll give this a shot, um, you know, take it step by step. I started by going to, um, going to uh, trade fairs, you know, just to see what the landscape was like. Um, I would go to leather shows here in New York just to see materials and, you know, and then it just, it happened gradually and organically over, you know, over a few years where ideas started coming to me. And then I just finally decided, let me try to, let me try to give this a shot. You know, as I said, I have, I think I mentioned before, I have a, a day job in finance, but there's a creative side of me that just always wanted to, to make something. And because it was coming from a place of what I would want to buy and what I would want to wear, I started with that as the inspiration first. I think that is, is it's such um, an ambitious goal and it's something that all of us would want is to find something that we would want to wear. But you actually did it. And I'm sure all the pieces that came together were extremely complex. How did you go about um, sourcing materials? How did you learn how to design? Um, how did you, were there mentors along the way that helped you put these pieces together? Uh, it was very much a trial by error, <laughs> I would have to say. <laughs> um, there were a few errors, there were a few trials, um, but it's been good. So I would say that from the artistic side, I mean, I didn't go to design school. I did. You know, I did artistic pursuits in high school, but I'm actually a math major. Um, when I was in college, I did take art classes. So I think, you know, just intrinsically, you know, I grew up with a lot of art inspiration. And again, I have to thank my mom for that. I mean, an activity that we do now, even now is we go to art galleries and talk about these things. So the idea of texture and color comes from her. And as well as I come from Trinidad and Tobago. And if you've heard about Trinidad, you know about our carnival. Um, and it's very much an explosion of color and texture. So that whole design aesthetic is, is part of who I am um, coming from there. Um, and then the other part of it is, you know, as, as, you, as you go to these trade fairs, you know, you meet people, you understand, you know, where's the best place to make things, you know, like, you know, you learn the different tiers of things. So do you have things made in Italy? Do you have them made in Spain? Do you have them made in Portugal? And, you know, by dint of where things are made, what does that mean in terms of how they're received within the industry? So it took a lot of research in, in that way, in, in the things that I couldn't tell just from, you know, just from, just from reading a book, you know, I really wanted to make sure I had that, but, um, you know, one of the limitations is not working in the industry itself. Sometimes you don't know who to reach out to. Um, but I have to say along the way, I've sort of met people by accident, which is, 
which is you know pretty great. I went to Mood uh, Fabric Store in New York, which you might know from Project Runway, and befriended someone there, and who has been very good at introducing me to other people in the industry. So right. I would say happenstance. So I have a couple of um, practical questions too. This must have been a huge um, financial investment. Did you get any um, help from a small business loan, or did you fund this all from your your uh, on your own? I've funded it all on my own, and you're right. It is yeah. it is a huge. It has been a huge investment. Um, right. I think, of course, there's always a the 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 challenge is you can only go as fast as your investment. Um, I think the upside of it is you can only go as fast as your investment, right. which means that you have to make intelligent choices for each of your dollars. And sometimes it's good not starting out with too much because you have to weigh what you're doing with each dollar and what you want to get back from it. Um, in addition to which, one of the things that I was always worried about and still am today because I am pr approached uh, by people now that they've seen the product saying, are you looking for investors? Um, and I'm sure at some point in time when I get to that level, you know, I'm, I think good partnerships are something you should always be on the lookout for. But I always wanted to make sure that I made something with that, that was true to who I am as a person first and wasn't influenced by someone saying, well, we can do this, but we can do it for a cheaper price. So why don't we use this material instead? Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, when I choose something, it's, it comes from a lot of thought. Um, and I just wanted to be able to have that autonomy, at least in the beginning. That's wonderful. So I'm thankful I was able to do that. Well, I know the shoes are very high quality. Um, it's not, you know, I mean, not to disparage Payless or anything like that, but these are really beautifully made, high quality shoes made in Portugal, which is well known for their quality. And, but generally you might find these shoes a lot more expensive. You're just going direct to consumer now through your website. And I, I want to mention that the link to the website is going to be on the, on the bottom of this video. So make sure you check it out. Mm -hmm. But um, so how are you able to keep costs down? Is it just by going direct to the consumer? Yes. Um, at this point, the, the fashions are just available um, on the website. For this summer, for anyone in New York, we're going to be at a store called Flying Solo um, that's in Soho. Um, I can provide the information for that after the call. But the idea is to do that, to keep the costs, um, of course, you know, make it make business sense. But also, you know, I, I think shoes don't have to cost a thousand dollars to be nice. I mean, there are the ones that are not disparaging at all. But I know for, you know, I, as I said, I always think of people like my mother at the end of the day who I want to make something that at least they can get as well. That's really nice. That lasts. And so right now doing it through the website direct to customer has allowed me the avenue to do that. And keep the prices That's terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. And yeah. um, describe why these shoes are comfortable because I've, I've, I've read about it and I think it's wonderful, but how did you, um, how did you learn about what it takes to create a comfortable shoe? So one of them is I'll talk about the, um, basically the progression. So I started off with a range of ballet flats. Um, and one thing I've always known from ballet flats, just from going around and is that, you know, that first of all, the padding inside is very important. So I wanted to make sure that you felt that when you put this, you put the shoe on. The other thing is that, you know, just doing through my research, I know that shoes should not be absolutely flat. So I made sure that that first range that I had, had a half inch heel. Um, and so there's a testing. And, and so with that created this body flat that it's actually comfortable. There's arch support. It's good for your feet. Um, and then when I had the body flats, you know, I'd get the question, is there anything else in your range? Do you have heels? And, you know, heels are that thing where women want to feel sexy and they want to feel nice. But again, they, you want something that you could wear all the time. And I said, okay, what, what's the important thing? The important thing is the toe box. I myself having worn heels where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rummage on my feet. I see women with bunions, which is something I've learned also through the course of making the ballet flats that, you know, the bunion problem is a big one for a lot of women. Um, and then also even just having padding going through the full length of the shoe, not only under the ball of the foot, but the heel as well. And uh, the, the, the inside padding for the heels has three layers of foam padding, three layers, which is not what you would conventionally find in a lot of heels nowadays. 
Um, so that's that's kind of what I wanted, and the the whole process of doing it with the with the manufacturer in Portugal, we'd have conversations where you know we started off with my shoe size because I wanted to make sure I knew how it felt before we went to other sizes, and he'd say, Marcella, we can't we can't go any wider. It will it will affect the shape of the shoe. And I said, I always say, if we can send a man to the moon, we can do this. And so we finally came ended up with a product that the the line of the shoe is still beautiful, but when you put it in. Okay. I literally have women put on the shoe and just stand in it and just close their eyes, which I think for me is the best compliment that I can get. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, and they're so attractive. I mean, they're just they're they're really pretty shoes. There's a a really uh, darling little uh, sort of ballet flat. I love the the heels, and they come in the sizes. Remind me of the sizes they come in. They come in sizes five to fourteen. That's it. It was they come up to size fourteen because. Mm -hmm. These poor women who have oversized 11 shoe can't find anything attractive. And these are really yeah. very attractive. And also because of the way they're constructed, they don't make your feet look super big. You know, exactly. if you were wearing like a big, long toe, pointed toe with a, with a, a size 13 or 14, <laughs> that would look a lot. But they're very attractive. And there's a really fun sneaker uh, with some uh, silver patches. It was just charming. That the silver sneaker, if you're interested in the story, I wasn't originally planning to have sneakers in the line at all. Um, I was I was in Portugal at the at at um, the manufacturer's uh, design studio, and there were a white pair of sneakers on a table with that leather next to it, and I had already made the heels in that leather. And I just what often happens is I'll just get a picture in my mind of a design. So I said to him, I was like, could we try this design with the sneaker? And he was a little bit skeptical, wondering how that would really go with the current lineup that I had. And I said, just trust me, I just have this image in my head. So after we got everything done, you know, I basically put the specs of what I wanted it to look like, came back to New York, and he called me three days after and said, everybody at the factory really loves this. Would you mind adding it to the line of shoes? And I was Fantastic. like, nope, it's been, my best, it's been my best seller so far. So... This is, just, this is wonderful information. I want to really encourage everybody to check it out, and especially if you know anybody who has problem feet but likes something fairly attractive. This is a wonderful opportunity. Um, M. Cadeau, C-A-D-E-A-U. First name is E-M-M-E. -M -M -E. I'm assuming that's your mom's name? No, it's, a, it's actually a play on my name. So Cadeau is just gift in French, uh, gift my last name, and Marcella starts the letter M. But uh, the Lenor, the Lenor Dorsey Hill, my mother's uh, name is Lenor. So I that's that. sweet. So I just have one last question to ask you, and that is, what is it that you love best about this business? I would say, well, right now, you know, I pretty much do almost everything on my own. Some things I've managed to outsource, but I would say the, I love the design aspect of oh. it. I just, I just love creating things um but i think a lot of satisfaction comes from just seeing someone wearing the shoe and genuinely just loving mm -hmm. it I'm, yeah there's nothing that that can measure up to that feeling you, you can't know. get better than that yeah well marcella gift this has been a real treat um you're a delight i wish you so much success and i encourage all our viewers to check out her website and to try her shoes um, thank you so, Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It was great speaking with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.